construction, golf news, equipment, travel, interviews, course profiles, and more. Your weekly fix of all things golf is about to begin. It's the Flagstick Podcast with your hosts, Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. Well, welcome to the Flagstick Podcast. Once again, I am your host, Jeff Bonner, and the other host, Scott McLeod, is with me. Um, Flagstick Podcast this week brought to you by Golf PEI. Golf Prince Edward Island is a premier Canadian golf destination boasting the most number of golf courses per capita in our country. With over 400 fairways closer than you can imagine, top-tier accommodations and exquisite culinary experiences, it is the easiest golf vacation you will ever book. So you book your golf vacations at uh, golfpei.ca. Make sure you're following us across all of our social media networks, of course, Instagram, X, TikTok, and Facebook. Please subscribe on Spotify, Audible, Amazon Music, and Apple Podcasts. And we encourage you um, many times over to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us, and click the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss anything that we happen to post up to YouTube because we do post a bunch. We do. Um, Well, golf events are slowing down. And that's a good thing. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> it's a good thing. I hope so. <laughs> means we're slowing down a little bit, uh, we hope. Um, we're going to catch you up uh, on the front nine on a few current events uh, that, that have happened since the last time we spoke to you on the podcast. Uh, on the back nine, we're going to play a little game that may provoke some discussion. Mm-hmm. And we do like to provoke discussion. There's no question sure. about Why that. Um, so let's get at the front nine. Uh, let's not waste any time. Uh, front nine presented by Metcalf Golf Club, a natural setting, a pleasant challenge. Uh, there is still a ton of golf uh, left to be played this year. Make sure you get to Metcalf and purchase your game packs. Um, there is a promo on game packs right now. I saw so, that, yeah. So uh, make sure that you jump over to MetcalfGolf.com and save yourself some uh, some money compared to regular green fees by taking advantage of the current fall game pack promo yeah um does the game pack promo include extra coffee because i think i need some right now if i drink any more coffee i'm going to be talking so fast the uh, podcast will be over in 15 minutes all right well we which can is not a bad that, thing so. either <clears throat> no i mean we'll get to it why i'm a little slow this morning in a bit Based and on... no we don't for those watching we don't coordinate the outfits for oh the yes podcast. Like, how, how is that that's all right that's it's funny a nice shirt though it feels very comfortable well you need the sleeves because it's cold out man yeah, it is cold it is I very was, cold I, I, I was I, driving last night i'll say why in a bit but uh i was driving last night and as i rolled through smith falls i saw the uh i saw the temperature drop below zero and i was like oh boy and obviously lots of frost delays yeah. around the ottawa valley this Wind morning minus but, five this morning oh but but it's supposed, supposed to, to be warm up. sun supposed to warm up gonna get some golfers out there get some nice fall golf in there Nice, pretty colors. Enjoy it while you can, people, because, man, uh, the cold stuff's coming. I think a good chunk of golf courses will probably be shutting down things by the end of the month, Uh, not because they have to, uh, per se, but with the weather. But there is things that need to be done to golf courses this time of year. And yeah. You kind of have to let the uh, the superintendents and the and the maintenance crews get out and do their do their thing. So I know I saw a note to members note from Metcalf that uh, Metcalf is uh, targeting October thirty first. Mm, um, yeah, that's but, pretty common these days. Yeah, and I think that that's a. I mean, the number of golfers that you're going to get after October thirty first when it starts to get a little too cold is not really you know necessarily conducive no, to staying open yeah. because you don't have and, and staff like, this time yeah, of year either. exactly and like you said they got to get the courses to bed to make sure that you know they're ready to go in the springtime and there's good shape and that, that's a little bit more important than just letting a few stragglers get a, a, some spare rounds in exactly. but uh, you know get it in when you can I know I've got a scramble tournament in November November 3rd by the way which could be snowing could be cancelled but we'll see oh I hope it's not snowing I hope not either it shouldn't be it shouldn't be at least not all day. In November. Well, at least not all day. <laughs> no, snow is sort of early December and time for Christmas I'm cool with, but snow in yeah. November. Ugh. Well, there could be some snow this week and uh, up in uh, Timmins where the offices is getting uh, ready for their uh, <laughs> they're they're playing their boys uh, high school championship and I know they had a multiple hour uh, uh, delay this morning but Man, I, I tweeted about this yesterday or, or posted on X or whatever. And one of the first people to respond was uh, Timmins. 
high school golf October. It was Jerry D. Uh, <laughs> people know oh my gosh, comedian man. Jerry I'm D. Going, and, that would be hilarious. And and I mean, obviously, it's like Canada. Eh? I mean, it's just it is what it is. But yeah, um, but don't you? I mean, that's officer, right? Would you not? Yeah. Consider the time of the year, maybe having the officer tournament closer to Toronto. If you're going to like Tim, Timmins is like, you think it's closer to Toronto, but Timmins is North man. Like that's, yeah, that's well, North. like you, well, you're our, better off having it here. Than yeah. Having it Timmins. Like you, our, you gotta... our, our boy, our boy Owen rig, you know, got it up there at, at Hollinger and uh, you know, but the date is definitely a little bit suspect. I mean, they, it is this time of year that they, you know, they obviously host it because they have to uh, take care of the local stuff and the regional stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of people are might, especially the coaches and stuff that are up there might be thinking, hmm, this might have been a little bit safer to have down. So. In the future. Yeah, Take exactly. this into consideration. There's a lot hey, the of gr- things that we don't like Toronto for. <laughs> yeah, Playing the gr- golf in uh, October, we love yeah. Toronto for. Now the now the girls are in Windsor. It's it's a little bit cool down there, but it's not uh, it's not as bad obviously uh, as Tim and so. Uh, so yeah. so just uh, to bring people up to speed, Amelia McFarland of Carlton Place is lead was leading or is leading the girls round after round one with the 69. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. round two is today. So. Uh, we'll see where that plays Jane out. Brown of Bowmanville leads the Boyds at seventy-one in the in Chili Chili Timmins. Chili Chili, 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 chili Timmins. <laughs> I'm sure that you know what they need. They need they need Big Daddy, Big Poppy on the yeah. on the third tee with his big cauldron of chili for all the <laughs> for all the players in Timmins. Oh, They're a big huge cauldron man. of. Uh, I I hope Owen chili. is. I hope Owen is taking care of those players up there. I know he was the speaker, uh, you know, the first night for the banquet to to talk to the kids and kind of inspire them a little bit. But um, man, I'm I'm sure some of those kids are probably uh, wondering what is going on right now. I'm wondering so. what's going on. Okay, um, all right. Good luck. Let's talk to about PGA of Ottawa awards. Now, this is uh, this is an annual thing, um, yeah. and it kind of uh, it brings together, culminates the entire season. Um, of the PGA of Ottawa and the uh, the flagstick.com PGA of Ottawa tour, Correct. where they basically recognize all of the tournament tournament winners uh, from the flagstick.com tour, uh, including players of the year, which were yeah. already announced, Tyler Epp and the main division and Graham Gunn in the senior division. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was packed. You said it was nice packed. Mm. Scott, Scotty Mack was there. Packed I was. Room That's at why the I'm West tired. <laughs> Western Ottawa, um, yeah. industry reps and and leaders from across the the country. Many of the manufacturers were in attendance for this. Yeah, which was great to see. Really, I mean, the heads of a lot of the different companies, uh, you know, and and shout out to them for coming and supporting the zone and supporting the players. Uh, I sent some personal notes to some of them already, uh, but yeah, it was good to see. But uh, yeah, that's why I'm tired because I live in Kingston and went up to Ottawa last night and back. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a great, a great night. So, well, now you you were you were nominated for uh, an award, the Coach of the Year award. You were nominated, yep. so I was so happy were, to be a finalist again for that. You were up there. You were up there for the possibility that the name would get called and you'd get to go to the stage. <laughs> Bridesmaid again. Bridesmaid again. Two years in a row. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so. The awards, um, yes. we'll just rhyme through them. I mean, obviously, this is all up on flagstick.com, it is, uh, but we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get at it anyway. Head professional also, of the year, we so also remember- have the, all the, we also have all the tournament winners, uh, all posted in that same post as well. So, yeah, so it's a full it's a full meal deal, it sure kind is. of thing you'd get at Chick fil A, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> The, After the uh, awards, <laughs> number of different categories, head professional of the year was won by Roger Beal of Read of You. Uh, Class A Professional of the Year uh, was won by Sean Banfield of Ottawa Hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, Executive Professional of the Year was won by Gord Percy of Smith Falls. Uh, now, just before we move on, let's let's get a distinction because because some people will look at this and go, "Well, aren't these all head professionals?" Do you know what I mean? Like head professional, Class A professional, executive yeah. professional. Like from a categorical point of view, yeah. What what differentiates these three categories that are so similar? So they may be all class A's, but they are represent different categories at their clubs. So if you're a class A professional uh, or, or in this, cate- this uh, category, for an example, this would be like an associate professional. They're not a head professional at a course. They work at a course. Um, they may be the associate professional, but, you know, they're not the head professional. And executives are generally... Um, 
a lot of the cases, general managers, regional directors, that sort of thing. So there is a separate category within the PGA for that, even though that they are all class A professionals. There you go. Now, you know, uh, apprentice of the year, Tyler Epp uh, of uh, Rita View. Tyler, obviously a really excellent player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but doing a great job killing it there at Rita View. So. Uh, teacher of the year, James Spernick of yep. uh, Meadows. James, good teacher, does some some indoor teaching. Uh... Yeah, he had a tough time. With, he had a tough time with the speech last night. I was talking to him a bit afterwards, and uh, he was hard hard for him to hold it together. And uh, he was certainly emotional in, in giving his speech. And and uh, he had to he had to actually present the next award because he's a member on the board, and they had the board members going up and presenting the oh awards. So here he was going from you know having being in tears to he was all you know flustered a little bit or whatever. So uh, yeah, yeah, they should rethink that, and uh, maybe you should have had him present the one beforehand. <laughs> yeah, maybe it would have worked out a little bit better. So, but uh, I think he said it was easier for him to present the award than to receive one. So. It always is. It's nice to receive them, but it's easier to present them. Um, so. Coach of the year. This is where yourself and uh, Derek McDonald of uh, yep. Royal Ottawa, who was the uh, recipient last year. Correct. Um, uh, Allison Timlin of uh, the Kevin Hame Golf Center was yep. the recipient of the coach of the year this year. Uh, junior leader of the year, Dave McDonald at Meadows. Uh, retailer of the year, Tara McEnroy at Ottawa Hunt. And this is really cool for Tara because this is, I think this is her first full year as the head professional, head professional at yep. the Ottawa Hunt. So, and it, it, and it just so happened that her husband, Scott was presenting the award and had to undo the envelope and present her name. So that worked out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and manufacturers rep of the year, Sean Perno from TaylorMade. Yeah, which was uh, nice for him, especially uh, a number of the TaylorMade team were there, including Matt Sismar, uh, Michelle Normand, uh, for an example. So, and then uh, he had his tech rep there as well. So uh, it was a nice, a nice, well-rounded uh, uh, presentation when when he was there to have uh, a bunch of the team from TaylorMade there. It's with him. it's it's nice to see too that from a manufacturer of the year point of view, um, this area, uh, the Ottawa PGA area region, is is very blessed with having some really, really good uh, manufacturer reps. So, I mean, you can see what a award like this is, I mean, congratulations to Sean and and he's an awesome rep. And mm-hmm. it just, it just, it's a tough, it's a tough one to tough win. Category. Tough category. You know what? Because there's so what many was, good ones. Yeah. And what was nice about this one was, um, you know, not only were the finalists there, but there were a number of other reps there as well. Like a lot of them were there. And, you know, obviously, you know, we'll get to get to why some of them were in town, but, and they had a choice not to come there or, you know, or be there or whatever the case. Um, but certainly there was a lot of them there and it was nice to see. Yeah. So now getting to that point, the reason why mm-hmm. so many of the manufacturing reps uh, were in attendance is because the, the PGA... PGA of Ottawa awards show or awards banquet um, is done in conjunction with the BPG group, which is a buying group for the, um, for the PGA. Um, Their buying show is in Ottawa right now. And as it it is is. every, every year they have their big buying show. Well, not every year it it alternates. It was in Toronto last year. um, So it it does, it does move around a little bit. So the award banquet is done in conjunction with that. um, So you end up, fortunately you end up with a lot of, uh, attendance uh, yeah we uh we actually slipped into the uh uh just the lounge downstairs we got there a little bit early and uh it was wild when you go into that bar lounge area as far as the industry it was like head on a swivel uh you know manufacturers reps people that you know from you know a long long time ago uh it was really nice to see and and uh it, it seemed to be endless as far as the canadian golf industry being there and uh that, that was kind of kind of brings up the memories of the pga merchandise shows and oh and, yeah uh, and and whatnot um, well even even you know like uh previous fall uh, buying shows too like sure yeah like steve Doucette was there who's who's the head of bpg now and steve Doucette and used to be with Callaway, Callaway nike yeah like i mean this is a guy that you know we've known for 30 years and i didn't get mm-hmm. a chance to to get over and see uh deuce i saw him from a distance but uh you know but then again that was a that was sort of that flashback of all those years with us, you know, being back mm-hmm. in retail and, and having all those reps and, 
going through now i do i miss buying season i don't miss the work that no. went into it no. uh i i miss you know seeing all the products and seeing the reps and kind of going through the process a little bit but you know it is a very difficult process to sort of you know predict what's going to happen for the next year figure out your budget do all that sort of thing yeah. but uh yeah uh, what do you remember from those years i mean we we did a fair number of those so yeah i mean you know the uh <clears throat> obviously my my memories of buying shows go back more to the uh, um, the P the merchandise show, the Orlando PG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show, Same. Those yeah, kind of things. yeah. And these that's all one, part of the These process. ones have been so different. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I recall there was one year that we did it at uh, that it was done at the OAC. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And, and it, this was at the same the same time when the OAC was was doing the um, this is the Ottawa Athletic the, Club for people yes, who don't know what the OAC which, is, yeah. which is no longer no around. longer existence. Yeah. Um, but the uh, they did the um, the Ottawa Golf uh, Expo, the the uh, Ottawa Golf and Travel Show, I think it was right. called at the time. Yeah. Uh, was there at one point, and then they they did the merchandise show, the buying show for the PGA uh, there as well. They've done it. I remember. I remember back in the day with these these shows where they 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 started doing the buying shows locally, and the reps Hotels. Would set up in the hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. And they and still you would do in some cases. Go yeah. room, you know, hotel yeah. room to hotel room to hotel oh, room. Yeah. It was kind of like you know, it was kind of cool. Um, yeah. So those, I mean, I, I never did the buying shows as a buyer um, hmm. since I started Flagstick in '96. Anytime there yeah, was yeah, anything yeah. like that. I was always going just as a well, as sure. one as a member of the media, two as an honorary director of the PGA of Ottawa. Yeah, um, I would just attend. Um, yeah, haven't attended many of those. I haven't attended any of those. In a long time. <laughs> well, the PGA show. I mean, obviously, you experienced a lot of those, and and as you said, you know, that would normally happen in January, and for a lot of people, that was a fill in to what they'd bought during the fall for their, you know, their pro shop or their off course store or whatever, whatever the case. Um, and those were always interesting because you know you're just going down there trying to find you know, unique things that you could, you know, put in your shop, stuff that might differentiate you from, you know, other competitors and things like that. And uh, yeah, it, it, the cycles have changed a lot. Obviously we see the products a lot earlier now. Um, they try to keep them under an embargo as much as they can, but it's not always easy with the media landscape the way it is. Um, but still uh, a good time. I think for a lot of people there, not only just to, uh, you know, to buy product or so forth, just to catch up. I mean, you yeah. just, you just don't run into people all the time. Um, you know, during the year, everybody's so busy. You know, if you cross paths, you just say it's a high hello, but you know, this might be a chance to have a 10 or 15 minute conversation, actually have a real conversation. I think that's in the end, the connections are, are what it's all about. Yes. I'm very sorry that I was not able to attend last night. Uh, uh, unfortunately I, I was in the rink. Um, fulfilling my coaching responsibilities <laughs> yes there and we'll you leave go. it at that um <laughs> didn't say what those were but those were my coaching responsibilities last night oh good um brooke henderson uh is uh, uh returns to the lpga tour um, yeah i mean i'm, I'm sure almost two months won. almost two months so. it doesn't seem like it honestly doesn't seem like it's no been that long since she's she's been on the tour but it has been a couple almost a couple of months now and uh so she's in south korea uh, mm -hmm. To play in the BMW Ladies Championship, yeah, it's her first start since August at the AIG uh, Women's Open, um, yeah. and this will be the twentieth LPGA event of the year, uh, and she is looking for her first win of the season. It's kind of weird to talk like that, you know what I mean? Like, it's like I know there's so many of them looking for their first win of the exactly. season, exactly. Yeah. Considering they've had twenty events, they've only had twenty winners, and there's a hundred and some. Well, no, it's her, right? it's her, it's her twentieth. No, so. but it, yeah, sorry, um, yeah. but. There's been so many events that have already right. taken place. Yeah, uh, there haven't been. That I know. Many it's just our ex winners, it's so. just our expectations of yeah, our. Yeah, and I and I know. really believe at times I think our expectations are too high, far too yeah. high, far yeah. too high, and puts. I mean, here's out. the thing: she's a she's a 13 time winner on the tour. Mm -hmm. The only other year since 2015 that she hasn't won uh, was 2020, which obviously had was shortened a lot by COVID as far as appearances and, mm -hmm. and, and things. Um, so yeah, I mean, she, nobody wants to win more than her. Oh. I, I guess that's what it comes down to. So, um, but yeah, it would be, you know, it'd be nice to see her, uh, have some nice success here to, uh, to finish out the year and she's not too far off in the, uh, the race to CME globe. No. And she opened with a 71, um, shares 56th place, which is, whatever it's the first yeah. round 
first round. See what, see what happens. Well, by the time this podcast is listened to by most people, she'll probably be through round two or three. So, well, yeah, there you good go. luck to her. Hopefully, hopefully she has a good week. Um, you got it. The Tomorrow Golf League. Yeah. Uh, Which was the one that was canceled. Yes. Right. I found a Canadian partner of all of all things here. We got a Canadian partner. Yeah. Um, this indoor golf league, which is uh, which is the, was the big talk of this indoor golf league. That's you know high tech. Yeah. Mania. Big massive screen and yeah. in backed the by South. Tiger and yep. and Rory. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to start in January, and mm-hmm. Sportsnet has the broadcast rights in Canada. So, yeah. question. I guess the question that you can ask is, <laughs> will you watch it? Mm. I, I mean, I think that's a bigger question for our audience more than anything. I, I'm going to say I'll be curious and maybe throw it on. Uh, is it appointment television? I, I don't know about that. Um, but... It's going to depend on the, it's going to depend on the first one. I think that, I think that when you ask the question, will you watch and this yeah. is a golf podcast, the people that listen to this show oh, yeah. are golfers. So the question right off the bat, will you watch? I think the answer from, 99.9% of them will be yes, the first one. Yeah, that would be the highest and, percentage. And, then, for and sure. that's sort of the yes, I will, the first one. And I'm in that boat as well. Yes, I will, yeah. the first one. And yeah. if it sparks any interest to me at all, it's okay, it's indoor golf. It's yeah. still golf, yeah. but it's not and, outdoor golf. So there is yeah. a massive difference in in how it's covered. There's a massive difference in the the experience of watching it because it'll be more like going and watching a hockey game um, or a baseball game or a football game than it will watching uh, a golf tournament. True. Um, just because of the nature of it, it's con- it's contained. And yeah. I'm it's sure a massive an screen, so this and... is not that. This is not the normal. You no, know, this 60, isn't hitting into your ten by. Your 10 no, no, no. This is this is it's four times the size of that. Uh, and you know, you're going to have the best players in the world competing on their teams. Um, it is pre-taped, so you know who knows what results and stuff might leak out. But um, I, I think you're right. Curiosity will drive a lot of people to the first one. The you know the how you measure it will be based on the second one more than more. Well, than yeah, it's going to be the, it's going to be the production value. It's going to be the overall True. experience. Yes. It's like, you know, um, it's like the whole live golf thing. I mean, live golf has been an acquired taste for a lot of people. Some yeah. people like it because they like all of that sort of uh, um, loud mm-hmm. music, players mm-hmm. wearing shorts, team mm-hmm. atmosphere kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. They like that. No, and 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 not to you know not to get off the topic here because I don't know how much more of that topic there is to have, but uh, you know talking about lib players and stuff. Did you see the relegation stuff? Mm-hmm. So Bubba Bubba's gone, Brendan Grace is gone. They have a chance to requalify, but they've been relegated. And then also relative to lib players, and we we talked about this on one of the previous shows. The break fifty. Have you managed to watch Bryson? Phil Mickelson yet? I've wa- I didn't know. I'm, al- I'm only halfway through, so yeah, okay. okay. No, I haven't All watched right. that one yet. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, you no, will so watch that. You'll probably have. Oh, yeah, I, I would say, it. yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> there's probably a bigger odds that you will watch that versus the second uh, event, the tomorrow oh, golf. Bryson break. I'm throwing bets mu- on that. Bryson break fifty is must see <laughs> yeah. uh, streaming. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely must see. I mean, yeah. it's it's everything about it is good. Yeah. And so, I and I think that's what, you know, I think that's what golf mainstream golf is kind of trying to chase a little bit yes. uh with some alternate formats like this tomorrow golf league and so forth. Whether Don't it's you find stick- it weird with the with the live golf, didn't they pay Bubba like oh probably fifty two hundred and fifty million or hundred million. million to F- go over there and then you million, relegate right. him? Like that doesn't well, make any sense. That's like paying that's like paying an NHL player eight million dollars a year to play and then sending him to the minors. Yep. Like, but, that doesn't make any sense. He's the draw, right? No matter how good he plays or bad he plays, he's the draw. But I guess they, yeah, whatever. Five players. See ya. Live golf once again. Okay. Um, all, right. all right. We got a, a few minutes left here. Just quickly get to sure. um, the Ryder Cup. Uh, ticket prices for the 2025 Ryder Cup were leaked. Mm-hmm. And um, practice day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of, this you is want to go watch the practice this is american practice okay. we're talking practice practice we're talking practice not the game <laughs> the not practice. the game practice 
$255.27 USDs. Including total fees and New York sales tax. <laughs> 255.27 if you want to go watch the practice, the Ryder yeah. Cup. Now, if you yeah. don't want to go watch some practice and you want to, oh, hey, you know what? Let's go watch the Junior Ryder Cup exhibition, celebrity matches and opening ceremonies. Well, that's four hundred and twenty-three dollars and sixty-four cents. So, uh, oh, that's not the best part, though. Maybe, maybe not, that's the price of parking in New York City. Yeah, maybe it's now all relative. Now you want to see the Ryder Cup three yeah, days, three yeah. days Ryder Cup, seven hundred and forty-nine dollars and fifty-one cents each day, each day, each day to go watch the Ryder Cup. Pack up the family. Get get yourself a twenty dollar hot dog and away you go. <laughs> now now listen, we pay thousands of dollars to go watch the Super Bowl. We sure. pay thousands of dollars to go watch Caitlin Clark shoot a basketball in a league that nobody sure. cares about. Um, Ooh, we pay thousands of dollars to <laughs> to um, watch an NHL game. Yep. I, no, I sorry, I said that nobody cared about. Cared about. Oh, cared about. I said cares oh, no, no, about. No, 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 no. Like, they whoa. care about it now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What whoa, I'm whoa, saying whoa. is they pay thousands yeah. of dollars to go watch yeah. her yeah, yeah. in a league that nobody cared about. Okay. Um, NHL games, thousands of dollars to watch a Stanley Cup playoff game. So is it outside the realm to watch? I would... Yes, I guess it's not outside the realm to pay 750 bucks to go watch 18 holes of match play golf amongst a dozen players. <laughs> God, I money, you? Oh, I don't know. I it just, is. I, that's that's when I gotta say these kinds of prices for these kinds of sporting events for me become that's yeah. TV for me. Yeah. Like I mean, I just not I yeah. that's my personal thing, and that's not yeah. yours, and it's nope. not anybody else listening uh to the show. Uh that's me. There's no way I mm -hmm. pay 750 bucks to go to uh, watch golf for one day. Uh, and obviously, not they when think, I'll see more watching it on TV. Yeah. Obviously, they think some people will, uh, or the ticket prices wouldn't be that way. Um, but we'll see. And I, I don't know. This is sort of a this is sort of a tough one for me because I look at it this way. I know, I know the you know this is a PGA of America property. They are obviously trying to maximize their investment, and you know this money will be going back into you know their programs and stuff to a point. But on the other side of it, you know, as an organization that represents, you know, the development of the game and so forth, so forth, it, it, it's a little bit of a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people, for sure. And, um, you know, they obviously have some provisions in there to, you know, for free for junior golfers with an adult and, and things like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty nasty. And the reaction online has been, uh, been appropriate, I guess, to, to what you would expect. Um, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's interesting. That's for sure. Yeah. Big time. All right. All right. We're going to take a break. On that note, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get into a little "Would You Rather" golf edition, a little fun mm -hmm. game. We'll see where yeah. this we'll see where this leads. Um, <laughs> we'll see where this leads. But uh, we got to take a quick break. Um, stay with us. You're listening to the Flagstick Podcast with Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. When you golf on Prince Edward Island, there are over 400 fairways closer than you can imagine. Not to mention countless miles of pristine beaches and a rich world-class culinary experience. So get here fast, then take it slow and play around on island time. Golf Prince Edward Island. All right. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the Flagstick Podcast. Jeff Botter and Scott McLeod here. Um, and uh, we want to get right into the back nine here. Uh, the back nine presented uh, by Falcon Ridge Golf Club. 27 holes of fun and challenging golf at great, great rates. Falcon Ridge Golf Club is a golfing experience you cannot avoid, and that experience has gotten even better. They have built the first TrackMan Range facility in eastern Ontario. TrackMan Range is all about exciting, easy-to-use features that provide the ultimate range experience for every golfer at every level. That's practice games and virtual golf. To book tee times or to book one of the, tw the 10 Trackman range bays, visit falconridgegolf.ca. And uh, don't forget to visit falconridgegolf.ca to keep up on when they're going to be opening their indoor simulators because I'm sure that's coming very soon. Very soon. <laughs> very All soon. All right. 
Would you rather the golf edition? <laughs> Do explain, Scott McLeod. I think we played this a little bit before. I, I came up yes. with 15 different things here. Basically, it's just making a decision on two different things that are golf related that sometimes maybe oppose each other. Just making a choice and you know we want people to sort of play along as well they can go through actually you know what i'll i'll, I'll take this and i'll create a post and i'll put it up Ooh. this weekend and people Ooh. can look at it and and make decisions on their own but we're going to run through it here you've never seen this because i came up with it yesterday um and we're going to talk about you know which we would rather of these two different things we're presented with yeah all right and see what it provokes <laughs> yeah okay <clears throat> Let's right. do it. <clears throat> do you want me to read them or yes. shall you? This is, this is your this is your all right. This is your uh, would, thing. <laughs> would you rather hit every fairway all year long or two putt every green? Well, <laughs> I mean, you already do hit every fairway all year long, um, <laughs> not necessarily, but uh, um, or close to it. <laughs> I think I'd rather hit every fairway all year long. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think so cuz you know if if I'm two putting every green and I'm hitting mm -hmm. greens in regulation all I'm doing is making pars. True. This does it see it's 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 one or the other, right? So so that means that when I play I'm going to hit every fairway. Right. Or I'm going to two putt every green. I'm not going to mm -hmm. one putt anything. That's right. So I've eliminated birdie from my scorecard and I think No you I'm, haven't. Well, par fives sure but well that, no, no <laughs> yes. because no because then that's yes assuming, no well nobody says nobody says you're not going to reach the green until oh come on <laughs> you're See? asking you're asking me this question i don't reach par fives in two <laughs> i don't play for i don't play the forward tees very often uh, even though i probably oh. should be so that therefore yeah. par fives are not reachable uh. therefore i'm hitting Essentially, the best I can do is hit every green in regulation, which means the best I can do is shoot even par. Well, I may not be the most outstanding golfer, but I, I still want to make That's kind of boring. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to have a chance at making birdies and potentially an eagle here and there. Uh, and I, I'm willing to accept the fact that I'm going to make a bogey. Yeah. But I can. I, I'm, I, I feel confident that I can probably make – I can probably two-putt every green on my own if I'm in every fairway. I, and and uh, that's where I am with you on that one as well. Um, I don't really care about fairways, but in this certain certain circumstance, um, I don't three putt a lot. I think anybody that you know maybe has issues with putting uh, might take the two putt, but uh, I don't. So uh, I'll, I'll take the fairways as well, even though I don't really care as long as it's playable mm -hmm. when you play. Um, but I want yes. me them birdies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dem birdies, mom. I want them birdies. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if I if I have six bogeys. If I have six yeah. birdies, I'm cool. I'd still even par. It, it's just interesting because you start to dig into the nuance of it, and yes. you start. This is where you get into a debate if you're going to have this at a you know a party or a group or a, a gang just sitting there having a chat. If you know they're really golf geeks, and you know why else would they be bringing this up at a party? Uh, but uh, yeah, because they've had right. too many drinks. Maybe that's the case. So uh, we'll save that for another day. Okay. All right. Would you rather play Wingfoot or Oakmont? So two storied golf courses that obviously have hosted uh, U.S. Opens, amateurs, so forth. Um, you know, one in Pennsylvania, one in New York. Um, choices here. I mean, uh, obviously, we both have yet to play either but uh, what this is a tough one because I don't because I'm going to I can give an answer, but I don't think I can give a reason. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, hear like, you. I don't I, really I'm, have I'm any reason. With that, so, yeah, I have no have reason logic. not to want to play both. Correct. And I have no reason to pick one over the other. So I'm going to say wing foot. Okay. All right. And, and But no reason why. Well, I mean, I'll, the only thing I'll say, wing foot, wing foot intrigues me a little bit more with respect to the overall layout and design of the course. Okay. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing about Oakmont that I don't like either. So it's kind of like, mm, it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, you know, St. Andrews or Carnoustie. Well, you know, there's things about both that I that I would like, but I can't say that I would say no to yeah. either one of them. No, and, and the idea here is to have a little little bit of a tougher choice, right? So uh, I'm going to go the opposite. I'll go Oakmont. Um, I like what they've done there in the last bunch of years, taking down lots of trees. 
They've got the things like the church pew bunkers. I'd love to see that. I wouldn't look forward to playing their one par three that all the way back plays almost 300 yards. But um, And I know I'd shoot a million on it, but no, uh, I think it, it, it intrigues Oh, I probably would. You would not. It, 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 it intrigues me uh, as far as a golf million. course. So. But uh, yeah, Oakmont. I mean, but again, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't turn down an invitation to either. No, and I, if anybody would, has I that opportunity, I wouldn't <laughs> shoot a million at Oakmont or Wayne Foot because, as we already established from the first question, I'm hitting every fairway. Yeah, this is this is where the so, the uh, this is where the greens start to be a factor, though. <laughs> I still take every fairway. Yeah, I still I take every. Well, fairway I think on those two long. for sure, especially if they're yes, in the U.S. I don't want to be in those church pew bunkers. I've been in the ones at Wooden Sticks, and the ones at Oakmont are way worse. Yeah, and not fun. Uh, now, although the ones that the ones at Wooden Sticks, I will say, is if you're in the ones at Wooden Sticks, you're not reaching, you're not getting anywhere near that green as your second shot. Generally, not. You're pretty much out of position on that first Unless first you can hole hit there. A friggin' forty yard cut around the trees yeah. down a hill to out of a bunker. Maybe you can. I can't. <laughs> it's a pretty bad tee shot if you're in there anyway. Yeah, it's a really bad tee shot. Okay. All right. Would you rather be 30 yards longer in your drives or hit four more greens around? Oh, I take the distance. Because I'll hit the four more greens if I'm 30 yards longer off the tee. <laughs> See? Now you're thinking. <laughs> There's now you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Although I'm yeah, pretty I mean... decent with a long iron in my hand, so I'm not too concerned about reaching greens in regulation either. Yeah. Um. Jeez. I, you make I, it sound like I'm a really good golfer, eh? Well, you, I'm you, pretty good. Rel relative to me. relative to the average player, yeah, you're okay. Um. I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'm in the same. I don't. I don't. Are you kidding me right no, now? No, I'm. I'm not. I'm lying. I was what waiting the for that. Hell? I don't need to be longer. That's Oh, I'll I take... hit it. I already hit it 340. <laughs> if I could hit it 370, this game would be so much easier. Oh, God, uh, you're already hitting wedge into every uh, hole. I'll take I'll take four more greens. Yeah, I guarantee, guess you guarantee, will. Guaranteed, because you know if there's a weak part of my game, it's it's definitely in the uh, in the iron category. I, I I'm not even one. gonna let you give a dumb answer. I I hit a wedge so bad. I was I was playing with uh, Trotty from people will know from Taylor Mead. Yeah, uh, I was playing with him at Trump Law, and I just I just was on like our fourth hole at Diab and I'd hit, you know, a par five with a seven wood from like 250 and I hit a nice six iron onto a long par three. And then I hit a decent drive in the next par four. And then I yanked a 54 degree wedge, 30 yards left on a hole into some bunker full of moon rocks. And I was just like, how dumb is that? <laughs> like just the easiest shot, the, the hard shots, no problem. The easy mm -hmm. shot, Let's mess that up as much as we can. So yeah, those those frustrate me. So I'll, right. I'll take I'll take the four more greens. So all right, that's gonna get a little bit interesting here. Uh, apologize in advance to our friends and relatives. Um, would you rather take? Don't a even read the second part of the question because that's not gonna you, happen. Would you rather take a week long vacation with your golf buddies or do a golf weekend with your relatives? <laughs> <laughs> There's dead silence here. This, Would is you a, rather? this is called dead air. And it's not because I can't think of anything. Well, it is because I can't think of anything polite to say. Well, and then you have to explain it to, to them. Well, I hey, don't know, hey, uh, hey, I would hey. definitely rather go with my buddies, which in some cases, <laughs> yeah. some of my buddies are related. Uh, yeah, but let's let's but, say but let's if we say they're not it, like no, I mean definitely <laughs> by my, my buddies. I mean, I first of all, for me, I don't have any. I don't have any relatives unless you're including my son and my brother. Well, those would be relatives. I know, but yeah. See, this is what makes it hard. Yeah. Now you got to turn down them to go play with your buddies instead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cuz I do I do like I don't I don't mind playing with either one of those two. Mm. So I could tolerate it. Mm. Uh, playing with you, I don't know about that. Exactly. Um, that can always be stressful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather? Uh, <laughs> I know I struggle. Look, I wrote the question. And I okay, struggle. You know with what? It. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to kind of backtrack here. I think I'm going to go with my relatives. 
Yeah. But I'm uh, picking the relatives. So like it's like I'm not, <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. like pick your poison. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the relatives that I go, but to uh, say to, to to save myself all right. overall, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna play with my relatives. This this is what although I, I do like a long vacation with my golf buddies. Well, really that's good. that's no, part no, of no, it. No, too, no, right? Retracting again. You get I a week I, or I a weekend. The, I have to read uh, the detail there again. Sorry. Was. Um, I'm taking a week long vacation with my golf buddies. Yeah. Uh, because I believe that golf buddies can include a relative. So. Mm. So I'm gonna go that route because then I mm. then I get more fudgy. of a I get more fudgy. of a, You're a choice it. and I get the week long vacation which is even more important. I, I, yeah, weekend. I think I think that's the key within it. I love my relatives as well. I love playing golf with my daughter for an example, but you know I also you know get to play with her on a regular basis. So yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll go week long as well. Just more more for the week than the weekend. Yeah, the week, that's it. The vacation, but uh, like. but again, you know, fun fun question with some nuance. So you have to really think about it. So. Yes. All right. Next, number five. Would you rather play around with no woods or no wedges? Oh, I'll play with no woods. I'll just move up a couple tee decks and hit irons off the tee. That doesn't bother me at all. Well, if I have to, if you're asking if I have to, if maybe I'm maybe I should have challenged ra- regular a round, off round the of back golf, tees. My regular tees, the regular round of yeah, golf regular tees. Play, then I'll take no. I can handle playing without wedges. I'm not that good a wedge player anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I can figure okay. it out with a nine iron. Yeah, I'll uh, a lot of I'll bump go, and runs. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go no woods. I mean, I can hit a four iron long enough. That's perfectly fine. Can hit four iron long enough. Um. <laughs> okay, I will you go. You're no freaking way. Brandon. You I will go no woods. Played a round of golf with his buddies, and they they made him play with no woods. Oh, perfect. And he's like, "Oh, it wasn't a big a deal. I still hit my four iron two twenty." <laughs> 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 All right, on to other choices here. Would you rather play around a golf with Scotty Scheffler or Nelly Corda? I'm going to say Nelly Corda. Okay. I don't know how much fun it would be to play with Scotty Scheffler. The jury's out on that one. Mm. He's a really good golfer, and I'd love to watch him hit balls. Um, I just don't know if his, his demeanor is... And, and it's casual golf versus tournament golf. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a so chill guy. I, you know, I don't know. I just, yeah, let's, let's Nelly, say a, look, Nelly strikes let's me say as somebody a casual who would be, round of golf. I'll, I'll change. Nelly strikes there. me as somebody who who would be a little more um, a little more outgoing? unguarded, a little more outgoing, a little more loosey goosey. Okay. And Scheffler seems like a little bit more quiet, Ooh. reserved kind of. Like, I don't know. It's what you see on TV and what you know, right? And it, reality, different, right? I yeah. Mean, Tiger Woods on, you know, if I were playing a PGA Tour round with Tiger, it'd probably be a boring as hell to play with mm. him. But if I were playing yeah. a casual round, I got a feeling that guy is a hoop to play golf with. Yeah, I think this is a yeah. You're right. This is a really, really, really tough one. Um, I'm, who, I, I think I will go, Scotty. I'm just more curious. I mean, there's you such high. You want to beat him? No, there's just be an asterisk? no. There's just so such a high level of respect from other players about what he does and how he hits it that I'm curious to see that for 18 holes. Okay. Um, versus just you know watching it, you know, live and watching him hit balls. That's perfectly fine i've seen that but i'd like to kind of be in the fray and actually see it play out over a golf course not that i wouldn't with nelly as well but i'm just a hair more curious on scotty versus nelly but that's a, that's a definitely a, a tough one for sure okay. but I, I i like your i like your reasoning though as far as you know being more casual and enjoying themselves i, I think you might have some more interesting conversations with Nelly. I think there's maybe a little bit more to talk about, even just non-golf, you know, with her family and their background in athletics and tennis and stuff like that. So. And, and truth be truth be known, um, not because Nelly Court is not hard to look at, but um, I, in my experience, in general, women are a lot more fun to play golf with. <laughs> I, I don't know why that is. I mean, and I've played golf with some some really good yeah. female players, and I've yeah. played golf with some beginner, you know, barely hit it off the ground players, and it, it doesn't change. Guys, for the most part, 
as much as that they try to fun. be really yeah. relaxed and chill, they somehow always get too frustrated with yeah. how they're playing, regardless of whether it's just a casual round of over, golf. Over, com- over competitive. Yeah, and I find yeah. that, that with women, themselves in, some women in general, and maybe it'd be different with Nelly Corda, but it doesn't, sure. I don't get that from her. I get if it's a casual round of golf, I'll bet you she's just like so chill to play golf with. Yeah. As uh, I think Brooke would be too. Like if I yeah. were, if you're asking that question about Brooke Henderson. Yeah. I, again, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm curious to hear what uh, people are going to say. Yeah. For sure. um, just other people. So, all right. Sure. Halfway, almost halfway through here. Uh, win the masters or win the open. Oh, I want to win the open. There's zero yeah. question in my mind. Yeah. I, I I'm the open as well. Where, I don't even care where it is though. I would prefer it be at St. Andrews, but. Yeah, to oh, me, it's know. it's still the it's still the world championship. Oh, it's the open. It's it, you know, it's not uh, you know, it's the best in the world who have a chance to get there. Uh, you know, the Masters still a little bit closed. Yes, there's going to be the best there, but it's much smaller. And the open is the open is the most historic uh, of the major championships. So yeah, I agree. All right, take a golf trip to Scotland or Ireland. Well, now, in, been, this one I'm going to say Ireland. Okay, because you uh, haven't been because to... I haven't been to Ireland, mm, and I have okay. been to Scotland. So, uh, and I've played, I've I've played good golf courses. I've seen Carnoustie. I've seen St Andrews. I've walked St Andrews. I've played golf courses uh, yeah. in Scotland, and so I'm good. I know there yeah. are there are nicer golf courses still oh, yet to see yeah. in Scotland because Scotland yeah. is not not just one place. Like there's Turnberry and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But Ireland really. The, the terrain and mm-hmm. the golf courses in Ireland really, really intrigued me. Mm-hmm. Really intrigued oh, yeah. me. So yeah. that's architecture that I want to see. Yeah. Um, Another easy one. Yeah, it's a tough one for me. I mean, if I'm choosing for myself versus picking for others, like I tell people when... if you can't they pick Scotland just because your name's Scott too, by the way. No, no. no. <laughs> when, uh, when people do ask... When people do ask me and they say, you know, uh, I've got one choice, I go one or the other, I usually tell them to go to to Scotland if they're only going to do one, just mm-hmm. the roots of the game and stuff yes. like that. Um, man, this is a toughie. Uh, I, I, I think I'm with you a little bit more. I, I've made a, a, a couple of trips to Scotland, played a good sampling of stuff, love the courses, love the people, obviously have family heritage and stuff that's over there. But um, there is definitely a rawness uh, in Ireland about some of the properties. And, you know, I've just managed to play properties kind of in Northern Ireland more than anything. But um, I think there's just an extra sense of fun that happens in Ireland. I think they are a dr- little bit more dramatic. You know, Scotland has some dramatic courses. I think Ireland has more courses that are wilder visually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the, the Irish people know how to get into the crack as they call it. They, uh, they, they mm-hmm. definitely have a, a good time, which is all part of the trip as well. I mean, yeah. the trip is not just about the golf courses. Uh, it's about the whole experience as well. So, uh, but a, a, a flip of the coin there for me with, with kind of a, a couple of percentages going one way versus the other. So, okay. All right. Uh, play golf with hickory shafted clubs and a modern golf ball or modern clubs and a feathery golf ball. Oh, I'll play with hickory shafted clubs and a modern golf ball. I don't, the feather, the feathery golf ball was never intended to be played with modern clubs, nor was the, Modern golf ball intended to be played with hickory shafted clubs, but I think that your golf round might be a little bit more enjoyable with the prior. Yeah, I, I think I think that I think the modern clubs, while they feel good, once they strike that little leather pouch with golf, with feathers in it, and it's not going anywhere, so that just might feel like you're hitting a wiffle ball all the yeah. time out there or whatever. So I think you're right. The differentiator is the ball more than the clubs themselves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, while hickory hickory shafted clubs, you know, it's harder to elevate the the ball. You don't quite as much friction on the face and some stuff, uh, some different things that way. I, I think I'm going to go number one as well. But, uh, yeah, interesting question. Yeah. So, all right, play golf in freezing cold, as in today, or unbearable heat. Choice. I'll pay in the heat. Yeah. Yeah, th- this body needs the heat. And I don't need to. I don't need to try to get warm. <laughs> yeah, you're playing in cold weather. You're still. You're still trying to stay warm, even though yeah. you're playing in cold weather. You're not playing in cold weather because you want to be cold. You're 
Yeah. So I'd rather not try so hard. I can wear shorts and a shirt and drink lots of water and find shade. And I've yeah, I mean, everybody's done it. So we've had some gnarly rounds in like places like Mississippi, for an oh. example, when the humidity felt the like two shirt, was... two shirts, uh, yeah. one shirt to get out to the parking lot and one yeah. shirt to to go to the golf course. <laughs> yeah, but I would still, I, I think I would still prefer that versus, you know, having to put mm-hmm. on six layers and cart mitts and, and just not being comfortable in any possible way. So uh, give me the heat as well. So, all right, uh, five more here. Uh, play a six hour round of golf, just normal, but a six hour round of golf or a three hour round with somebody blasting music so loud that everyone three fairways over looks at you. <laughs> Here's a fun choice. <laughs> well, no, this is an easy one for me because that's like I'll play the six hour round of golf as much as I hate that. I can't stand. I but well, first of well, all, there's, the there's supposed to be round, two things that you hate. The three really. the third three round of, three hour round of golf with somebody blasting music. So that wouldn't even happen. Um, in, well, it's, I know in it's this, hypothetical. In but this scenario, it is. So I would punch don't the even person in the head before we even got off the first tee. <laughs> I hate that. I hate it so much. I hate music on the golf course. I hate hey, it. I like I like music. I, I like it low in don't... my group as long as everybody in my group exactly. is down with it. And I like it yeah. in charity golf tournaments where nobody yeah. cares because it's supposed yeah. to be a, a fun thing. charity golf tournament. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everybody cheats in those damn things anyway. Um, but I'd take the six hour round of golf if I had to bear through three hours of listening to freaking music. Oh, I couldn't do it. And I and I don't I don't worry about the music so much. I just I I, I get ticked here that you'd be disturbing everyone else. I'm yeah. worried about everybody else's experience exactly. that they're looking at you and going, Unfair. Man, those guys don't do it. Those those guys are idiots or whatever. But again, this is you know, this is what would you rather be about, right? You so come uh, across me on a golf course and you're doing that, you do not want to come across me on a golf course. While I'll I'll go I'll go the six hour round as painful as that could be. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. a painful, but it's not as painful as the three hour round with somebody blasting music exactly. so loud that everyone three fairways over looks at you. All right. Yeah. Here's here's an odd one, but weird one. But let's see how you handle it. Birdie 17 holes, mm-hmm. then go 17 over on the last hole to shoot even par or make 18 straight pars. Oh, I'm, I'm down with the birdies. Yeah. Oh, so it's the same, 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 same score. score. Why not? I'd take the 17 birdies. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're both they're both good stories, but uh, I think the I uh, think the first one's are a they? better. 18, yeah, I think 18 straight pars. I mean, I've done that. I've done that. I haven't done that too many times. times. 18 straight cra- pars. Oh my god, 18 straight pars. I've done that so many times, it's insane. In okay. the in, in the years I've been playing, yeah. 18 I mean, straight pars. 18 straight pars. I've right. played many, many, many bogey free rounds of golf. Now and I've never done it at at, no, at, I didn't say crazy eighteen bogey hard free. golf courses. Yeah, that's a little bit different story. You know, I yeah, but but it's I mean, very Met, difficult Metcalf, to have a nickel. I've done I've done that across the street at Metcalf. A yeah, ridiculous number of times. Yeah, so I mean, I'm talking more. Yeah, more whatever as far as difficulty, of course. So I'll, I'll go the uh, I'll go the seventeen and and seventeen over. Don't you um, want to make birdies? Isn't that the goal of the game? No, not really. The score is the score. Yeah, but I want to make. They're both they're both even par rounds. But that's the thing. It's it's the goal of the game is a score, and you they're shoot both, the same score. Both, both I would the same much score. rather make seventeen birdies and then blow up, <laughs> and really blow than up. Just go and say, "Hey, yeah, how'd you shoot? <laughs> oh, I was even. Yeah, how'd it go? Eighteen straight pars, and then you turn to your buddy and say, "Would you shoot? I was even. Would you shoot? I had seventeen birdies and a and a seven and a seventeen over on the last hole. Cool." <laughs> well, again, answers definitely will vary on this well, one. Subjective, no based, question based on the person's experience or so forth. But all right, uh, we got think... three more to get through. And we're, all right, we're play golf to... until you're a hundred, or shoot fifty nine at age fifty and quit oh, for the I rest of your life. Fifty nine at age fifty and quit for the rest of your life. Oh, absolutely. I don't want to. I can barely oh. play twenty rounds of golf now, and I'm fifty three. <laughs> Even if I live to be a hundred, which I certainly intend on doing. Sure. I don't know that I even want to play golf when I'm under. <laughs> I'm not so sure that there's days where I get up and I want to play golf now. Oh, so God. I'll take the 50. Well, the, the it's it's irrelevant because I'm over 50, so I guess I'll never shoot 59, according well, to this. Oh, yeah, but this is a this is a scenario. So, but, yeah. yeah. 59. What if I shoot 59 at age 59? Is that with the question? Then no. I take that, but because yeah. then I can but still the, do that. But then you play no more golf for the rest of your life. I'm cool with that. 
Okay. I am right. so cool with that. Uh, I'll keep playing. I don't I don't care. 59 is great, but you know, I'd rather have the potential to shoot 59, not the guarantee to shoot 59 oh. for the for the rest of my life. I want to I don't want to miss Mailing it in. <laughs> Mailing it in. Whatever it case, but yeah, let's let's hear the uh let's hear the responses okay. on that one. All right, fight a hook on every tee shot or fight a slice on every tee oh, shot. I'll fight a hook. Okay. I hate fight. I fight a slice when I'm playing bad now. Like if I yeah. if I'm hitting the ball poorly, it's a yeah. slice and I hate it. Yeah. Um, I'd rather take a hook. Although, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. The, no, the, hook goes, the hook's going to go farther. Would it's not going to carry as far necessarily. Would you rather? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I'll take the hook. Oh man, I set myself up for badness here. Uh, I hate to see a slice. But I hate a hook. I'll fight the hook. I fight a hook anyways. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just continue to fight a hook. How about that? All, All right, right, last one. Uh, would you rather play Augusta National and not play golf for three years or not quit golf and never play Augusta National? So in uh, other words, current current situation or play golf. Uh, get to, You basically got to give up three years of golf to play Augusta National. No, nah, I, I, I don't. I'm not anybody from Augusta National listening to this particular <laughs> podcast. This is highly unlikely. But anybody that is, uh, don't take offense to this if you were about to give me a call and ask me if I want to come and play. Right. But my answer would be to if I never played Augusta, you're good. Uh, I would still I'd be fine. I'm I will concur. And that wraps up our 15 Would You Rather Golf yeah. Edition questions. At this stage of my life, giving up three years of golf is it's a lot. Yeah. You know, if you're asking me this question when I'm 25, I, oh, think, it's I, a different I story. think I might be willing to give up three years of golf at that age because I still got a ton of golf left to play. Sure. But I'm not so sure how much longer I have to play. So there you go. We'll see. All there right, I will take I will take these post post them up on flagstick.com and people can bandy them about with their pals as yeah. well. Yeah. This should be interesting to see some of the answers to yeah, to these questions. I'll I'll leak some out on social too so that they go that way. So. All right. Go. Cool. cool. Well, that was fun. There that you go. was fun. That was a fun back nine. Thank you for that. No worries. Thank you to our sponsors this week for helping us out with this show. Uh, Metcalf Golf Club, Falcon Ridge Golf Club, and our presenting sponsor, of course, Golf PEI. Uh, golf Prince Edward Island is a premier uh, Canadian golf destination, boasting the most number of golf courses per capita in the country, with over 400 fairways closer than you can imagine. Top-tier accommodations and exquisite culinary experience, it, it is, in fact, the easiest golf vacation you will ever book. So visit golfpei.ca to book those vacations. Uh, awesome show. Um, really hope that you, uh, you enjoyed that. Uh, be sure to follow us across all of our social media networks, Instagram, X, and Facebook, TikTok, and subscribe on Spotify, Audible, Amazon Music, and Apple Podcasts. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us, and click that notification bell. Make sure you never miss an episode or anything that we might be putting up there, uh, especially with Flagstick Academy. New tip up there again this week. New tip going up the week after and continues and continues and continues. Uh, get over to flagstick.com for more amazing golf content delivered every day and be sure to subscribe to the flagstick digest newsletter so that you can get all this great info dropped in your inbox three days of, of every week um, but as always uh, we do appreciate you tuning in but until next week i am jeff Potter. i'm scott mcleod remember always go for this next time.